Hey guys, John here. Today's video will be a little bit different. Recently, the channel has reached 10,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. I didn't think this channel would grow that fast, and although I know that's a small number to maybe some of you guys, it means a lot to me and I really appreciate you. I asked over on my Instagram some questions that you guys might have or if you even wanted for me to do a Q&A. So since I got a lot of questions about why or how I started my YouTube channel, I thought why not make a video sharing that and then I'll answer your questions at the end of this video. So it all started back in December of 2018. I just bought an iPad and I was trying to figure out ways on how I can do it and naturally, I go on YouTube and I type iPad for architects. And to my surprise, I didn't see any video that was specifically for architects. So I started to search for other terms that are not very architect specific, like iPad for graphic designers, for photographers, for videographers, and just try to see how other people use it. The near comes 2019, I told myself I wanted to read more books. And so I started by reading Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. I was listening to podcasts at this time and a lot of them mentioned this book. So I was intrigued. I wanted to read it, I wanted to see what it's all about. So while reading this book, I got inspired to think about how I can't stop trading my hours for dollars. And one of the ways that I thought to do this was hey, why not start a blog? Originally, it was going to be purely architectural content, but then I realized that I don't really want to be talking about purely architecture because I already do that eight hours a day at my work and I want a different kind of creative outlet. I basically posted articles for four weeks and around this time I was still reading books. I was still absorbing ideas and podcasts and uh, videos on YouTube and I thought to myself, it seems like I am a little bit behind the times. It seems like there's a better platform out there for me. I feel like I'm a better communicator than a writer. And so I explored the world of YouTube. I was still trying to perfect how I'm using my iPad at this time, but I was like, you know what? I bet you that if I create this video, iPad for Architects 2019, people would be interested in watching this. So I take my brand new Canon M50, bought a mic, didn't even have a light, just started recording. I recorded my video three times. The first one that I recorded, ironically, was actually the best one, but it felt like I didn't give enough information. So I shot it again. The second time, the framing was off. It was just a little bit weird. So I shot it again for the third time and it felt like it was the best one. In hindsight, it actually wasn't. The angle was weird. The framing of the camera was weird but it felt like it delivered more value than my previous two videos, which is what I was wanting to focus on. It was around April when I started my blog and about 42 days later, I posted my first video, iPad for Architects 2019. At first, I got an initial boost in views because of course my friends and family wanted to see it. People were there commenting and just saying, hey John, this is so cool, you're starting something. But then it slowed down a little bit, maybe a couple days or so before I started to see a surge in views. All of a sudden, it had a thousand views, 2000 views, 4005, and it just kept going. The big number that I remember early on was 30,000. It had 30,000 views relatively quick, and then it jumped to 60,000. And of course, now it has a lot more than that. That's when I thought I'm onto something. And at first I thought I'm going to focus solely on architecture content. You know what they say, the riches are in the niches. So I created eight architecture videos. That's not a lot by any means in the YouTube world, but that's what I could produce working full time and stuff. But then in doing that, I ran out of ideas. It felt like I put myself in a box where I didn't want to be in the first place. Similar to my blog, I wanted it to be about everything that John Imperial likes and wants. So that could be tech, that could be life advice, that could be architecture, but I didn't want to be stuck in this box. So the good thing is I named my channel John Imperial. So I felt that I had the creative liberty to branch out into other types of content. Around this time, I was watching other content creators out there that really became an inspiration. This people, are also doing kind of something similar. They have their own jobs, their day jobs, so to speak, 
guys like Michael Soledad, who's a good friend now, Ollier, right, Becky and Chris, Matthew and Cena, their videos are influenced by what they do on a daily basis, what their jobs are, but they don't talk about that 24 seven. So why do I have to do that? Some might say I branched off a little too soon. Maybe I should have waited a little bit, but that's kind of what I wanted to do. So this was 2019, 2020. And despite wanting to branch out of architecture, I had big plans for it. It's a big part of who I am and I still wanted to share that. But the things that were happening in the world really made it hard for me to follow through with those ideas. And so I had to rethink my plan and I had to look at what's around me and that was tech. Ever since I was a kid, I've loved tech. So why not share that experience? These are things that I already bought. And the funny thing is even in real life, I am the go-to person for my friends. My friends would come to me, ask me, hey, John, I wanna buy a laptop, I wanna buy a cell phone. Hey, my grandmother would ask me what printer to buy, things like that. I'm just kind of a natural resource for that. So that was the whole idea. Why not be another resource for other people? Another thing that happened naturally in my life was we bought a house. And so I was trying to set up my home office and I decided why not share that process as well. I reached a thousand subscribers around April, 2020, and I got monetized on June, 2020. And that was crazy. I had a thousand subscribers then and a year later, 2021 of June, I reached 10,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. 10 times the growth. Some people would argue could have grown faster, but I wasn't fully consistent with posting. And that was by nature. I never wanted to be forced to create. I wanted it to be a natural process for me. I like the trajectory and the direction the channel is going. Of course, you'll see a lot more tech videos. You'll see more designing your space kind of videos. And of course, I'll give you guys life advice videos like this one. So I wanted to share just three main ideas that I've learned from doing YouTube. Number one is even if you're doing something you love, it can still feel like work. I don't know about you guys, but I've heard this phrase said over and over, do something you love and then you won't have to work a single day in your life. And to an extent that that's true, but there are days when you just won't feel like doing it. But the thing is you keep pushing because you know your goals and when you do it, when you get over that hurdle of not wanting to work, not wanting to do it, you feel this deep sense of satisfaction. You feel this sense of relief that you actually did something that you love and enjoy. I just don't want other people to fall into this romantic idea of being a YouTuber or being a content creator or whatever that thing is. And when you get there, you realize that, oh, wow, this feels like work because it will feel like work. You still have to show up. Let's just say, for example, being an architect. I love and I've dreamt about being an architect, but there's so much more than just the actual architecture work. You have to coordinate projects, call clients, call contractors, suppliers, research online, submit drawings to the city all of these things that you don't really, or you're probably not thinking of. The biggest difference is when you're doing something you love, it would feel more natural. It'll feel like at the end of the day, you did something and accomplished something that you truly care about and that you enjoy. The second lesson that I've learned is it's okay to figure it out as you go. This is a phrase that I love. I have it on my Instagram bio because it reminds me that I don't have to have all the answers right here, right now. I can try to figure that out later. I think a lot of people wait for this perfect time, for this perfect moment before doing something. But sometimes you have to get ready on the way. Sometimes you have to get going or else you'll never be fully ready. This channel is a perfect example of that. I started a YouTube channel not fully knowing what I wanted to be. I started shooting a video not knowing how to edit and I just figured it out along the way. But if I got too caught up with all of the details and the information that I need to learn before actually starting one, I would have been overwhelmed and I probably wouldn't have started this channel in the first place. Start from the very beginning. Maybe you need to learn how to shoot a video. After shooting your video, you need to learn how to video edit, then edit that 
And then you need to learn how to properly tag your videos, what title to put, how do I post a video on YouTube? You just kind of start to accumulate that little by little and no matter what your first video or your previous video is never really that good enough you always find a way to improve it. In the architecture world, we try to create a good set of drawings, the best that we could. But for some reason, as soon as you hit print, you see something wrong with your drawings. It just happens. You try to do your best in the moment. The same thing with YouTube. I create videos, I post it online, and then I see an error that I didn't see during editing. It happens so many times. So my advice to you is don't get bogged down with all of the details. Learn it one step at a time and figure it out as you go. And last but not the least is keep creating. It's this simple idea that the more you create, the more ideas can come out of that. The more you create, the more opportunities can come out of that. So one thing that I tell people who ask me how can they start a YouTube channel or what's my advice, I always tell them just shoot with your phone, start with that. You don't necessarily have to buy the right gear, lights, mic, camera, laptop before doing so because most of us have smartphones now. And so take that phone and record right now and start doing the process and experience what creating YouTube videos are. Even if you don't actually publicly post it, maybe you could just share it with a couple of friends and get feedback and see if you enjoy that process. And sometimes by doing the actual thing, it helps you really know whether you want it or not. People might count that as failure. I know in the past I have when I start something and I don't like it, it doesn't work out for me. Sometimes I see that as a failure, but now I see that as an opportunity. It means that I don't have to keep thinking about this thing. I can move on from it because I know and I've tried it and it didn't work. So now I go to the next best thing. What other ideas did I have? I feel more free to explore other ideas and not be tied down to this idea that I thought was perfect. So those are the three lessons that I think sticks out to me most by doing YouTube. And I hope that inspires you, encourages you. And now let's move on to the Q&A. First question, are you going to be upgrading to the iPhone 13 Pro? Um, I'm really not sure. Um, I used to be the guy who wants to upgrade every year, but now I try to be as reasonable as possible. So if there's enough upgrades or updates that means a lot to me, I will probably pull the trigger. But generally, I try to go every other phones now. It seems like the upgrades, the mid upgrades aren't as substantial for me to care. Second question is, how did you meet your wife? I met my wife through church. I actually have met her back in 2016 and we were going to the same church. I was close to her sister more than her. And then in 2017 was when we kind of gotten reacquainted, came good friends, then the rest is history. If you guys are curious though, to know more about that, I do have a channel with my wife, which you can check out right here. And we shared a video on how we met. What tech products do you use the most often? Um, aside from my MacBook Pro and of course my iPhone, I really use my iPad a lot, not only for media consumption, but when I'm doing some script writing or when I'm sketching ideas for my architecture projects, I use that a lot. Next question, this is a really good one for my friend Lonnie. Content over consistency or consistency over content. I think naturally we all tend to be perfect. So if I say content over consistency, most people would probably see that as, oh, I need to make this the best video I've ever created. When in reality, you probably are not as good as you would have been if you just kept creating content and actually produce something. So I would say consistency over content, especially in the beginning and then towards maybe when your channel has grown a little bit, you can focus more on content. But of course, this is not a reason to just create poor quality videos. I'm just saying that if it boils down to it, I'll put consistency number one and number two is content. There's a saying done is better than perfect. So. That's what I would leave it at. Somebody asked me if I still speak Filipino or Tagalog. Siempre. 
lumaki ako sa Pilipinas, uh, tumira ako doon 22 years bago ako pumunta sa Singapore and then lumipat ng US. Actually, nag ako sa UST College of Architecture and doon ko nakuha yung bachelor's ko. Next question, what's your favorite type of content to make? I would say right now, I love the home decoration, DIY, desk setups kind of videos. Mainly because initially, I created a lot of architecture videos and then I went pretty heavy on tech videos. And I feel like these kinds of videos is like a perfect marriage of the two. So it's like a perfect balance and I enjoy that a lot. Next up, can you make a what's in my iPhone video? Please, sir. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm interested in that. Maybe we'll do that soon. The next question a lot of people asked about and I'll just kind of answer it in a very general way. Um, I have a blog post that I'll link up here if you want to read a little bit more about it. So the story is very simple. We were driving around, I was maybe 10 years old in Mandaluyong, the city in the Philippines where I grew up in. Red gate, two car garage, very simple. I passed by it when I was in the Philippines back in 2015 and I still can't understand what it is about that house that drew me because now looking at it, it's very, very basic. There's nothing special about it. But that is initially what sparked my interest. I attended a technical high school in the Philippines where I got introduced to drafting. Then I learned about scaled models, drafting, technical pens, T-square, all of that stuff. And then I ended up competing with a scaled model competition. So it kind of just went off of there naturally. And that was it. I became an architect. What is your favorite accessory on your desk? and that's very easy. It's the MagSafe stand from Grove Made. It's just so simple. And sometimes those are the best solutions, the simplest ones, the ones that makes the most sense. And you just go and think like, why didn't I think of that? And the MagSafe stand does that for me. It's a simple solution, beautiful execution. This is not an ad and I just love it. Last question, what is your advice for new creators? Um, aside from the three lessons that I shared, I think one of the most important things that I could tell you is create content for yourself. I know we hear a lot about how to cater to our audience, make sure they like it, and make sure we're solving their problems. But in reality, you also have to be creating videos that you want. And I know that's kind of hard because initially you kind of have to create videos that other people want to see before you can actually create it for yourself. But one thing that I did um, kind of not really officially, but I would create one video for other people and then one video that I really want to create for myself. And I felt like that was a good balance and it helped me scratch my itch, explore ideas. And even though not all of my ideas are good, it at least allowed me to explore that and stay true to who I am. And you know, eventually I think when you get bigger, it just gets to a point where you get to create whatever you want. Look at other YouTubers out there. If you guys want to be a part of future videos just like this one, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. That's basically the main platform where I communicate with you guys. So go ahead and follow me there. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.